Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Come on, honey. We'll get married in Benton. We'll get married in North Pork. <laughs> you are the honoriest pig-headed woman I ever seen on the entire... You deserved it. Why, you... You... We're gonna get married in North Fork. Do you hear me? We're gonna marry in North Fork. We marry in Benton. Besty? Besty. Oh, Besty. Besty, don't leave me. Don't go away. Don't... Please stay with me, stay with me. your friendly panacea and lightning rod man. Anybody home? Speed Sullivan, just passing in the neighborhood, thought I'd drop by. Uh-oh. Nice strong pulse there. Diagnosis, unconscious. Prescription, Sullivan's Panacea. <coughs> Doesn't it go down school? Yeah. That's all. You'll feel wonderful in just a bit. That's that's it. There we are. There's a new mystery ingredient in it, huh? What are you doing here? Huh? Selling lightning rods, Speed Sullivan, Sullivan's Panacea, in that order. It'll be all right. Where's... Well... Well, you, you better get out no, of no, here. No, 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 madam, you need me. Why? <laughs> madam, what passed your lips was ambrosia. Ambrosia is... Ow! How about the lightning rod? Ow! And ten makes two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, Mr. Harris only wanted to pay you seven dollars fifty cents for each head of those cattle, Paul. You charged him ten dollars. Well, Harris drives a hard bargain, son. I just had to out trade him. Yeah, but trading is like trading one thing for another, isn't it? Money kind of makes it different. Yeah. Well, look at it this way, son. Money's just a convenient way of keeping score. You don't have to feed it. It can't break a leg and can't get sick. And it fits in your pocket. Now, in the store, you take a... Well, let's say you take a penny in one hand and a piece of hard rock candy in the other, and you weigh them one against the other. Then you decide which one you'd rather have. Yeah, but doesn't that depend on how big the piece of rock candy is? That's right. That's what I've been... <laughs> All right, folks, step right up here. Oh, come right in closer here, folks. Get up right close. Well, I'll... You are about to see something the likes of which you've never seen before in your lives. Come on, son, let's now, get a little closer. This, ladies and gentlemen, 
This is the little dandy. Three-quarter inch spiral lightning rod, the finest lightning rod sold west of the Mississippi. But for purposes of demonstration, I will use little dandy junior. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, for this demonstration, I'm going to place Little Dandy on the roof of the specially constructed asbestos model house. And while that is there, this house is immune from fire caused by lightning. But I will remove the Little Dandy and simulate a summer storm with four riding high in the clouds. I turn the wheel. The spark from four leaps to this now unprotected house. When the mighty mallet of Thor strikes the heavenly and voila, your life could well be forfeit. Voila! Thirty-five dollars, ladies and gentlemen, a cheap enough down payment on the lives of your loved ones. Now, folks, step forth and be counted. Our treasurer here will take your orders. And in the meantime, I would like to show you a new item we're introducing this season, and this season only. This was conceived in Europe, sent to the east coast of the United States, and given to me for exclusive Western representation. Now, I would... Look, look, wait, wait just a second. Hello, Speed. Ladies and gentlemen, there'll be a 15-minute intermission, but don't go away because you haven't seen anything yet. Step closer, folks. Good to see you. you come on over here and sit down and let me talk to you. <laughs> oh, look, you old son of a gun. Nice to see you, Speed. Well, we're going to come out and see you tomorrow. Uh, how you been? Just fine, just fine. Mark, you're a sight for sore eyes, and I got just the eyes for it. <laughs> why didn't you try some of your panacea? Took too much last night, that's why they're sore. <laughs> <laughs> Speed, tell me, you still selling those lightning rods that never get delivered? Lucas, the last time I met you, you were honest. You could have clipped me for $500, but I took a page out of your book. Those rods now get delivered. Sales are up 600%, making more money than ever. Got myself a new item, too. Plague amulets. Plague amulets? Huh? Guaranteed to war off the plague, head pains, feet pains, and the vapors. Speed, you really believe that? Been wearing this for four months and haven't had one touch of the plague during the whole time. No, I don't want to buy anything, Speed. Oh, no, no, free to you two. Want to protect my friends? No, thanks. Tell you what, then. Let me buy you lunch. Oh, fine. What about this show of yours? Oh, well, Miss Whipty can handle it. Mark, how would you like to take orders? Pays a quarter an hour. Quarter an hour? What do you say, Paul? Well, son, you take that quarter an hour in one hand and wear it against sitting around for nothing in the other. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one taste of this... Hi, nice Swifty. Well, hi, kid. What are you doing here? Oh, well, our paws you. are gonna eat, so I should come down and help you. You know, write orders and stuff. Well, can you write? Of course I can. <laughs> Speed, how do you do it? What do you mean? Keep selling things to people they don't need? Oh, Luke, I, I only sell people a belief in their own well-being, a self-confidence they can hold in their hands. You see, faith and courage aren't things that you can feel and touch. But the amulets, the panacea, the lightning rod, mm -hmm. those are things that are tangible. Those folks say, those horrible things can't happen to me as long as I have these. Mm -hmm. Speed, you know, I think you missed your calling. You should have been a preacher. That's right. A little faith, a little courage, throw in a little hope to make a baker's dozen. Care for a touch? We'll make some wonderful appetizer. Oh, thanks, Speed. Look, I've got to go down to the bank for a few minutes. I'll meet you in the hotel dining room, all right? Fine. Right, I'll see you over there. So you're Speed Sullivan, huh? That's right, Speed Sullivan, lightning rod king of the West. That's yeah, good. You, uh, you know what this is? That's a little dandy lightning rod, $35, $5 down to protect you and your loved ones. Know where it came from? Sure, it's one of my samples. I left it out. <laughs> Say, how is that poor girl? <laughs> Uh, if a uh, few gentlemen would like to place an order, uh, my assistants are up the street. Only order you got is to get up and walk out of here quiet. Anybody hits a Croxton gets hung. Special a uh, Croxton woman. The scoundrel richly deserves it. Why don't you two go out and get him? We have got him. Me? Why, now, now, wait a minute. Somebody had already hit that girl before I got there. Who? Oh. Why don't you ask her? We did. That's why we come looking for you. Now, uh, uh, just a moment, gentlemen. I'm sure we can solve this problem most expeditiously. That's right. And fast, too. And when it is, your feet ain't gonna be touching the ground. 
Look, all I tried to do with that young woman... We was... know what you tried to do. She told us. Now, look, you want to assault somebody, why don't you try a man? I, uh... I don't know what that young woman told you, but I had nothing to do with it. Shooting's too good for him, Fess. Yeah. Hanging don't take too long, neither. Think you ought to get bent? Yeah. Bend him, Fess. Bend him. <laughs> Make him hurt a little. <laughs> you and me is gonna fight. I am not without the knowledge of fisticuffs, sir. Take off that gun belt. I don't wish to get shot if I should happen to pink you. Uh, what? All right, all right, all right. We'll do it your way. This here fella assaulted my daughter. What? That isn't true. Look, we've got to let the marshal settle this. Lucas, this is an absolute prevarication. A case of mistaken identity. Now, there are two sides to every question, and I'm sure with the proper opportunity, I can clear this up. Well, the marshal will give you the opportunity, Speed. Come on. Well, Miss Croxton, is this the man? Yes, it is. He came to the house and tried to sell me some lightning rod, and, and when I wouldn't have any of it, he, he hit me. She's telling the truth up to the last three words. Miss Vashti, you want to sit down? Thank you. Tell me, Vashti, was there a struggle when this man assaulted you? You bet there was. Ain't nobody belt sis thought there's a struggle. There was some wrestling. With speed? Tell me something. What kind of hair does he have? I mean, is it brown, black, straight, wavy? In a real struggle, he must have lost his hat. Um, uh, well, it was um, black and straight and with gray. He must have wore a wig. Madam, baldness is a sign of masculinity. I wear it proudly. Did he hit you with his fist? Well, sure. You know, a knuckle wouldn't have made the kind of a cut you've got on your face. Guess he must have worn a ring, huh? That's what it was, a ring. Sullivan isn't wearing a ring. That's right. Miss Vashti, did you yell at any time during the assault? Of course you did. Vashti never fights without hollering. Well, sure I did. But not loud enough to wake up this man's son who was sleeping in a wagon not 50 feet away, huh? All right. I cut my own face, I tore my dress, and I burned the money. Now, is that what you want me to say? Are you calling her a liar? I'm not calling her anything. Well, we signed a complaint, we're gonna see that justice is done if we gotta do it ourselves. We'll be in for the trial, Marshal. Get her out of here. Well, Mike, it looks like you don't have much of a case. Well, it's easy to see the girl is lying. This whole thing is ridiculous. How did you get out of there? I picked the lock a little while ago. Look, I got things to do. I got to get out of here. Now, look, Sullivan, I think you're innocent. But it's going to take a judge to clear you unless that complaint is withdrawn. You know, Mike, uh, people lie for certain basic reasons, like sparing feelings, saving face, personal gain, protecting somebody. Maybe she's protecting someone. Like a boyfriend. Well, I've only seen her in town once before. Rode in on a burr to go to a barn dance. Waltzed about three rounds with a fellow, and King and Thess come roaring in and dragged her out. It seems they don't take to her gadding about. Hmm. You remember who that man was? Yeah, sure. One of Gebhardt's wranglers. The one with the scar on his face. Well, that's Cade Conway. Now we've got a name we can use. Look, I got an idea. You go along with it, the three of us ride out to the Croxton Ranch? All right. All right, I've got to pick up my horse. Speed, I'll look in on the boys at the hotel. I'll catch up with you on the road. Hey, 
know something, Sheriff? If lightning ever hit this place, everybody in here would die like a rat. I'll tell you what I can do. For five dollars now, I can give you an awful good deal on the lightning rod. Now it's a huge one. Go ahead, kid, and order. My treat. Anything up to a quarter. Oh, thanks. Say, good looking. Are there any more at home like you? Stu. Oh, same, please. But that wasn't very polite. Ah, it keeps him happy. Say, uh, Swifty, I was wondering about that money I was supposed to get for helping out. Oh, sure, kid, sure. Got change for a dollar? Uh, no. But not on me. We'll settle later, then. Wait, I know where I can get some change. Bet you'll never guess what I've got in here. What's that? Here, I'll show you. It's a rattlesnake rattle. You know, you can tell the age by just counting the number of buttons. And here, I'll show you something else. What are those? These are his fangs. How'd you get them? Well, when you find a rattler, you just grab him by the tail and pull real hard. And when he turns around to, to bite you, you just grab him by the teeth, one in each hand, and... Isn't that dangerous? Well, it's gotta be awfully quick. Quarter. Well, these fangs sell for a quarter apiece. I'd throw in the rattler. You know, back east, they'd sell for three dollars a lot. Deal. Hey, that's a lot of money exchanging hands there. You're just making a business transaction. Well, you learn quick, boy. Can you eat with this, Paul? I can't, son. We've still got a few things to straighten out. Mm -hmm. Mr. McCain, is, is Pop on the hook that bad? I better go with you. Pop's usually out of trouble in a half an hour. What's the matter this time? Well, Speedy, I guess you'd call it a case of mistaken identity. Oh, <laughs> the classic defense, mistaken identity. Speed always uses that one. Speed always. Look, you, you boys wait in the lobby for us. We ought to be back in about an hour, huh? Say, I'll uh, show you some card tricks. Oh, good. I like card tricks. On second thought, maybe I better read. What's that man doing out of jail? Why ain't he handcuffed? Don't worry, Daddy. I got him covered. He ain't going anyplace. Now, Thess, you just put that gun away and sit down and listen. We want to talk to you. We'll listen, but that man's going to pay for what he done one way or the other. Your way or ours? Now, simmer down, King, and listen. Micah, remember what we were talking about? Let's see if I'm right. Thess, when was the last time you told a lie? What's it to you? Answer him. Let's uh, see. Uh, a week ago, I left the gate open and a cow got out. And I told Daddy I didn't. I thought he'd get mad. But he found out anyway. Well, you lied to avoid punishment. Mr. Croxton, when's the last time you told a lie? What do you want to know for? Well, people have reasons for lying. I've got a good reason for this. Well, maybe I told the kids I was on business when I was off doing a little drinking. Mm. Well, you lied to preserve status and spare feelings. Speed? When's the last time you told a lie? Oh, I, I never told... Uh, a couple months ago, uh, there was this uh, ship in the lightning rods, but lost is what they were. Now, that figures speed lied for personal gain. You're lallygagging around here like the man who cut down the cherry tree. When was the last time you told a lie? That's fair enough. Let's see now. I told Mrs. Carpenter she had a nice hat, but it was really pretty bad. I lied to spare her feelings. We all have our reasons for lying. Don't we, Vashti? Well, what do you mean? When was the last time you told a lie? Now, I told you the truth. It was that man right there. Well, we've covered all the fundamental reasons for lying, all except one, lying to protect Maybe you're protecting somebody. Is it Kate Conway? 
And just what do you mean? Has that Wrangler been hanging around here again? I ought to put the whip to you. Well, you're gonna have to come and get it first. It was Conway, wasn't it? It was that man right there. Was it? Oh. Rasty, I'm just trying to be your friend. I know it hasn't been easy for you. Well, you just bet it hasn't been easy. My ma died when I was six years old, and ever since then, I had the worst part of being a wife. Pa and Thess, they won't marry. Well, why should they? They get their meals made, their clothes washed and sewed, and on Saturday night, they go out chasing women and lock me up. Some women get who they want by just kissing a man. But with those two around, I gotta use a tree branch or an ax handle. You spent most of your life just doing for your family. Well, from now on, I'm doing for myself. But you know, what I can't figure out is how all that love and consideration can just disappear like a wind-blown cloud. Now you stop running around the bar and say what you mean. All right, Vashti, I will. I just don't think you'd sacrifice that man. Now, I know how you feel about Conway, but you tell me what kind of a love would you have if you knew all along that you were responsible for Mr. Sullivan being in jail? You just wouldn't be happy unless you told the truth. Would you? No. Well, it was Cade. All right, he may not be much. But he's the only man that ever told me words that didn't have edges and corners on them. Mister, I'm awful sorry for all the trouble I caused you. Now, I even told them that you went the opposite way, but they tracked your wagon. Well, I know where Kate is, and I'm going to him. But he belted you and stole your money. He can't hit near as hard as you can. Caught me off balance. Well, I can lick Cade Conway any day in the week, and I'm gonna marry him. And he didn't steal that money, because half of it was his. And you come looking for him, and the first piece of lead you catch is gonna be from me. Want us to help you pack your things? What things? Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. McKay. Lucas, you're amazing. Amazing? How? You played that girl like she was a harpsichord. What do you mean, Speed? You tricked her, you scared her, you made her feel sorry for herself, then you hit her with a soft sell. That job you did was a classic. I sort of stayed out of things because I was screening you. Screening me? Lucas, you're a natural-born talent, smooth. I want you in a partnership with me. Now, I don't mean peddling this junk, but big things, big, big things. Insurance, stocks and bonds, we're a perfect combination. I hit them hard and you ease the rug right out from under them. In two years, you'll have 40% of a million dollars. 50-50? I could make it your 60 and my 40. I'll tell you what, Speed. You've got a deal if you can answer one question. What's that? Where was the man when he jumped off the bridge? What man? What bridge? Any man, any bridge. He's on the railing, of course. That was before he jumped. Oh, well, uh, 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 he was in the air. That was after he jumped. Uh, well, one foot in the air, one foot in the railing. Uh, two feet in the air and one on the railing. Uh, uh, a foot and the... Uh, 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 uh